Electrolysis of Sodium Sulfate Solution by kscience.com The electrolysis of sodium sulfate solution is carried out using a cell or power pack which supplies a direct current to two electrodes. Here I'm drawing negative signs to show how this is the negative electrode. And here I'm drawing positive signs to show how this is the positive electrode. The negative electrode is called the cathode and the positive electrode is called the anode. Sodium sulfate is an ionic compound and electrolysis uses electricity to break it down. The chemical formula of sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. Sodium sulfate contains two sodium cations and one sulfate anion. As this is the electrolysis of sodium sulfate solution, the solid ionic compound, sodium sulfate, is dissolved in water. The molecular formula of water is H2O, L for liquid. Water is a simple molecule. This ball and stick model shows how there are covalent bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. When the ionic compound, sodium sulfate, dissolves in the water, the water ionizes into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. The covalent bond breaks, and we can show this in a balanced equation where H2O, alpha liquid, reversibly forms H plus, AQ for aqueous, plus OH minus, AQ for aqueous. A hydrogen ion forms, and a hydroxide ion forms. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. The container contains the electrolyte, which the electrodes are dipped into. So the electrolyte is aqueous sodium sulfate. The cations and anions in this electrolyte are H plus cations, hydroxide anions, both coming from the ionized water, and then sodium cations and sulfate anions, both coming from the sodium sulfate. As there are hydrogen ions, and sulfate ions in solution. This means we can also write there is H2SO4 AQ for aqueous. You may recognize H2SO4. This is sulfuric acids. So we say this electrolyte has been acidified with a dilute acid. We're now going to go through what happens at the electrodes, and you need to remember cations are attracted to the cathode and anions are attracted to the anode. The electrons flow from the negative terminal in the power pack to the negative electrode called the cathode. The ions are free to move in the solution. The positive cations are attracted towards the cathode and the negative anions are attracted towards the anode. Remember, different ions form more easily at the electrodes when they're the same charge. When it comes to anions, we know halide anions discharge the most readily. After the halide anions, then comes hydroxide anions. After hydroxide anions are then all other anions. Therefore, the hydroxide anions will discharge at the anode compared to the sulfate anion. At the anode, the positive electrode. Each hydroxide anion loses one electron. We can explain what's happening at the anode using a half equation. To begin with, we write OH minus and then an arrow. When the hydroxide anions lose one electron at the anode, water is formed. So on our half equation, we're going to write the product H2O. Water isn't the only product. Oxygen gas is also formed. So on our half equation, we're going to write O2 as another product. And as electrons have been lost at the anode, we're going to show this on our half equation. 
We do this by writing plus E minus. This means electrons have been lost. To balance this half equation, we're going to put a big two in front of the H2O. So I'm writing a H2O here just to show there are two molecules of water produced. There are now four hydrogens on the right and four oxygens on the right. So we put a big four in front of the OH minus to balance the number of atoms on each side. The charges also need to be balanced. There is now a charge of four minus on the left. So we put a big four in front of the electron on the right to balance the charge. As the hydroxide anions have lost electrons, oxidation has taken place. When it comes to which cation will be discharged at the cathode, if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, then hydrogen will be discharged. If the metal is less reactive than hydrogen, then the less reactive metal will be discharged. In this case, sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, so hydrogen will be discharged at the cathode. At the cathode, each hydrogen cation gains one electron. We can show what happens at the cathode using a half equation. We write this as H plus plus E minus, which forms H2 molecules, which rise up as hydrogen gas. To balance the half equation, there are two hydrogen atoms on the right and one on the left. So we put a big two on the hydrogen ion on the left. We now need to balance the charge. The two hydrogen ions means there's a charge of two plus. So we need to put a big two in front of the electron. So this balances out the charge. The hydrogen ions have gained electrons. So reduction has taken place where hydrogen has formed at the cathode. In the electrolysis of sodium sulfate solution, for every two hydrogen molecules produced, there is one oxygen molecule produced. This means double the volume of hydrogen is produced compared to oxygen. And what's left in the solution is the sodium sulfate. So in the electrolysis of sodium sulfate solution, the aim is to produce hydrogen and oxygen gas. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.